Hi, I'm Chris Rycroft and welcome to Harvard Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods. In the previous video in this series, we introduced the fixed point iteration that we can use for solving nonlinear equations. Here we're going to see that the Newton method can be viewed as a special case of fixed point iteration and we'll look at its convergence properties in detail. We'll also introduce the secant method, a variation on the Newton method, that doesn't require any analytical derivative information. In the previous video, we looked at using fixed point iterations to solve the root finding problem, f of x equals zero. And we looked at a particular example where we were able to convert f of x equals zero into the form x is equal to g of x that form the basis of our fixed point iteration. And to do this, we needed to perform some algebraic manipulation of our given function f. And we also needed to ensure that the magnitude of g prime was less than one at our root in order to obtain convergence. And it's not so obvious how to generalize this to an arbitrary function f. So to obtain a more generally applicable method, let's now consider the following fixed point iteration. We'll say that xk plus one is equal to xk minus lambda of xk times f of xk, and here lambda is an arbitrary function. So this would correspond to g of x is equal to x minus lambda of x times f of x. If we have a fixed point alpha of g, then that will give us a solution, f of alpha is equal to zero. And that's what we're trying to achieve. And the only way that this could possibly fail is if lambda of alpha was equal to zero. Now recall that the asymptotic convergence rate of a fixed point iteration is dictated by the magnitude of g prime of alpha. And we'd therefore like to set the magnitude of g prime of alpha to be as small as possible. In particular, we could aim for the magnitude of g prime of alpha equals zero, and that would allow us to obtain superlinear convergence. So suppose now that f of alpha is equal to zero, then g prime of alpha is equal to one minus lambda prime of alpha f of alpha minus lambda of alpha f prime of alpha. And that will simplify to one minus lambda of alpha f prime of alpha. Hence, to satisfy g prime of alpha equals zero, we could choose that lambda of x is equal to one divided by f prime of x. And surprisingly, this would lead us to Newton's method we'll have that xk plus one is equal to xk minus f of xk divided by f prime of xk. And so we see that we can justify Newton's method through an alternative logical derivation. Based on fixed point iteration theory, Newton's method will be convergent because we know that the magnitude of g prime of alpha is equal to zero and that is less than one. However, we need a different argument in order to understand the superlinear convergence rate properly. So to do this, let's look at a Taylor expansion for f of alpha about f of xk. So we can write that zero is equal to f of alpha and that will be f of xk plus alpha minus xk times f prime of xk plus alpha minus xk squared divided by two times f double prime of theta k, where theta k is between alpha and xk. If we divide through by f prime of xk and rearrange, then we find that xk plus one minus alpha is equal to f double prime of theta k divided by two f prime of xk times xk minus alpha all squared. And therefore, roughly speaking, we can see that the error at step k plus one is equal to the square of the error at step k. And this is referred to as quadratic convergence and is extremely rapid. In order for this to work though, we need to be sufficiently close to alpha since we're relying here on a second order Taylor series expansion. An alternative to Newton's method is to approximate f prime of xk based on the evaluations of the function at xk and at the previous step, xk minus one. And if we substitute this into our iteration, then this will lead to our secant method, where we have that xk plus one 
is equal to xk minus f of xk times xk minus xk minus 1 over f of xk minus f of xk minus 1. And the secant method has several advantages. Firstly, we don't need to evaluate the analytical derivative of f. And in addition, during the usage of the secant method, we only require a single additional evaluation of f. And this happens on the very first step of the iteration, since we require two function evaluations to do our initial gradient estimation. In general, this will be less work than in the Newton method, where we also need to evaluate f prime of xk at each iteration. As one might expect, the secant method converges faster than fixed point iteration, but slower than Newton's method. And in fact, it can be shown that for the secant method, we have that the limit as k turns to infinity of the magnitude of xk plus 1 minus alpha divided by the magnitude of xk minus alpha to the power of q is equal to mu. And here, mu is a positive constant, and q is equal to the golden ratio, which works out to be approximately 1.6. So let's now take a look at a Python example where we'll compare Newton's method and the secant method for root finding on the function f of x, which is equal to e to the x minus x minus 2. Let's now look at the program n underscore secant.py that demonstrates the Newton method and the secant method to find a root of the example function f of x, which is equal to e to the x minus x minus 2. And in this program, we first define our function f of x, and we then define a function d f of x that calculates the analytical derivative of f, which in this case will be equal to e to the x minus 1. And this function will only be required by the Newton method and won't be needed by the secant method. We'll then define the starting point for our Newton method to be xa equal 2, and we'll define the starting point for our secant method to be xb equal 2. And in the secant method, we need to estimate the derivative of our function f using the previous step, xk minus 1, in our iteration. And on the very first step in the method, we won't have a previous step available. And we therefore initialize 1, we make use of xbb equal to 2.1, and we evaluate the function at this location. We'll then perform a number of iterations with these two methods. We'll print out our current iterates that are stored in xa and xb for the two methods, and we'll also print out the corresponding function values that will allow us to track the convergence to a root. We'll then perform the Newton update, making use of the analytical derivative and we'll then perform the secant update. We'll first evaluate f at our current iterate, and we'll then calculate the iterate at the next step, and we'll store it in a variable called tem. We'll then copy the current iterate, xb, into the variable xbb to track the previous iterate, and we'll also copy the corresponding function value. We'll then update our current iterate to the new value that is stored in the variable tem. So let me now go ahead and run this program. So the first column shows us the progression of our Newton method. And we can see that the iterates rapidly converge on a root at 1.146. And if we look at the corresponding function values in the second column, then we see that there's rapid convergence to zero. And in particular, after four steps of the Newton iteration, then the function value is around 1.07 times 10 to the minus five. And on the very next step, that function value is reduced to 3.91 times 10 to the minus 11. And that is roughly consistent with the quadratic convergence that we expect, where the errors are squared at each step.
The third column shows us the progression of our secant method. And again, the iterates converge on a root at 1.146. In the fourth column, we can see the corresponding function values, and they converge rapidly to zero, although a little slower than for the Newton method. We can see that the program actually terminates due to a division by zero error, and this is encountered in the secant method and happens when the iterates become so close that the function values at our current step and our previous step become so close together that we will get a division by zero. And this is something that in a practical implementation of the secant method would have to be avoided by detecting this case when our iterates become too close together.